you slaves always request for dua you slaves always request for dua please fulfill the wish of every helpless ya allah please fulfill the wish of every helpless ya allah alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin والصلاه والسلام على سيد المرسلين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اله واصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel, welcome to another episode on the Silsila Spiritual Cures. And I'm sure you know by now that the purpose of this Silsila, this program, is to assist the grief-stricken Ummah of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherever they are in the world, because Madani Channel, your Madani Channel, is broadcasting globally. And subhanallah azza wa jal when we look at the different silsilas and programs on madani channel all of them are designed to empower us with authentic islamic education information and knowledge as well and this silsila spiritual cures is there to present some of the research some of the works of his eminence amir ahl sunnat hazrat allama maulana abu bilal muhammad ilyas attal qadri Dawud Barakatuhu Al-Aliya, the founder of Dawud Islami, with regards to spiritual problems, financial problems, or other kinds of different problems, medical diseases, sicknesses, illnesses, and the list goes on. Because let's face it, each person out there is going through some kind of difficulty. This is, this is a fact. some have money problems some have sleep problems and in fact today we are going to be covering some aspects of sleeping some people find it difficult to sleep they are suffering from insomnia some people have nightmares constantly night by night nightmares are affecting their sleep some people are tired when they wake up in the morning because of insufficient sleep or sometimes oversleeping inshallah we are going to share some madani pearls of advices and they after some wadaif some invocations incantations to be recited to remove the different problems be it nightmares or be it any other difficulty a person may be facing when it comes to their sleep pattern when it comes to being an insomniac or any other such sleep this order inshallah ta'ala but before we continue let's remember the beautiful hadith niyatul mu'mini khairum min amalihi the intention of a believer is better than his action so don't delay make those good intentions today make them right now ya allah azza wa jal i'm watching i'm listening to the silsila of madani channel for your pleasure and happiness for the pleasure of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that what i learn i will try to practice i will try to share with others as well i'm here to seek ilmuddin inshallah ta'ala even if you don't have any sleeping disorder perhaps you may know somebody hmm? so have your notebooks out your diaries out you can jot down the important points and you can always refer to them at a later stage maybe today you're not suffering from a sleep disorder or any other kind of problem but tomorrow next week next month or next year or in 10 years time subhanallah your dawud islami is there to assist you to advise you to motivate and encourage you as well so jot them down because ink is the best memory and as sayyidina anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that capture knowledge by writing it down subhanallah because many things we're going to forget when this silsila ends we won't remember many of the things but if we wrote some of them down or all of them down 
we can refer to them at a later stage, inshallah azza wa jal. There are so many beautiful bounties and blessings and benefits for the fortunate Muslims who recite abundant amounts of durood e salawat, or salutations upon the crown of creation, the cream of creation, the owner of Jannah, the knower of the unseen, the intercessor of the Ummah, our most merciful master, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That person who recites durood e or salawat 50 times daily. The beloved master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I will shake hands with that person on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. I mean, if you think about it, that's not a small thing. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the beloved of Allah azza wa jal, is shaking our hands. So we know what to do. Instead of wasting away our very valuable time in these few moments of life that we have, in unnecessary conversations, useless activities, that don't have any real benefit for you and I in this dunya, in the qabr or the akhirah. Why not keep our tongues moist with the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, with the recitation of quran e Paak, durood e Paak, istighfar as well. That will benefit us inshallah by being obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal and obedient to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's recite together. Sallu ala al-habib. صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Each and every single one of us we need our daily sleep and we know if we are sleep deprived and we don't get sufficient sleep what happens to us? mentally psychologically, emotionally, it affects us. It affects our concentration. If you have too little hours of sleep or your sleep is broken up because of some problem that you have, the next day, whether you've gone to work or college or university or jamia or madrasa, your mind is not there because you're fatigued. You are tired, your mind is tired because your mind has not rested sufficiently. Your body has not rested sufficiently. So sleeping is something that we all need. But sufficient sleep and a good sleep, a good night's sleep. Now, there are certain things we should take note of. For example, in the beginning of the day, and between Maghrib and Isha, one should not sleep because it is makru, it is disliked. We are advised when we are going to sleep, we should think of the qabr, think of the grave. Because in the grave, we will be all alone and nobody is going to be there but our deeds, our a'mal. You know, they say in English, sleep is the brother of death. Because when you look at a person sleeping, they are sort of unconscious. They are sort of, of, de of deceased or dead. Because they can't move. They are unaware of their surroundings. They are still breathing. But it seems like they are dead. Sleep, sleep is the brother of death. And when you're going to sleep, how beautiful our deen is. When you're going to sleep, when you're closing your eyes and you're dozing off, then you're remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the teaching of our deen. And even when you're awakening, when you open your eyes, you're remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanAllah. And so we should busy ourselves. And this is very good for a person who is suffering from insomnia. For those who don't know what is insomnia, it is a problem, it is a disease that an illness, a person has that is unable to fall off to sleep and there could be several reasons for that but a person who is insomniac suffering from insomnia they should constantly at the time of sleeping 
constantly remember Allah Azza wa Jal by reciting tahleel, tasbih, tahmeed, etc. What is that? La ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Continue to make this, these adhkar, these dhikrs of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal until you fall asleep because a person awakens in the state that they sleep and on Qiyamah a person will arise in the same condition that they die. What if our eyes didn't open up in the morning but we slept in the state of wudu? We, ste we slept in the state of making dhikr of Allah, of reciting some Quran, reciting our dua, wadha'if, etc. We slept in that condition. But we didn't awaken in the morning. Our soul was taken away. So the person, how they will die, that's how they will arise on the day of judgment. Keep that in mind. Something very important regarding boys and girls, that when boys are 10 years old and when girls are 9 years old, they must be made to sleep separately. Brother and sister, when they reach these ages, they must sleep separately and not on the same mattress or the same bed. Even a boy of this age must not sleep with boys of the same age, brother, cousin, or even with older men on the same bedding or mattress or bed. And a couple, husband and wife, must not sleep with a child that is of 10 years old on the same bed. When we are going to sleep, there are certain things to be done. And subhanAllah Azza wa Jal, you know, if we are attached to this beautiful Madani movement of Dawud Islami, we will learn so much. It's unreal. And there's a constant, one of the beauties of it is, there's a constant motivation and encouragement and reminders to practice upon these things, to practice upon the sunnah of Rasulullah to practice upon the teachings of the glorious Qur'an. That's one of the beauties because we need reminders. We need constant reminders. Let's face it. In the rat race of this dunya, we get drowned in so many different thing, things in, in our social circles, on social media, with our, in our personal lives, work or studies, it's easy to forget. It's easy to forget to do what we're supposed to be doing, to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah to follow the teachings of the Qur'an. But do you imagine if you have somebody who's there or you have a program which is there to remind you all the time, to remind you on a daily basis, weekly, monthly basis, yearly basis. I'm drawing your attention to Naik A'mal. This is a department of Dawud Islami where there's more than 80 different departments of Dawud Islami. And this one department, Naik A'mal, if you go to Play Store or App Store, you can download this, this app for free. And it's a self-questionnaire where you're asking yourself in privacy, alone, certain questions every day. Did I make good intentions? Did I perform my five times salah? Did I respect and obey my parents? Did I follow the traffic rules? Like this, there are different questions you ask yourself. If you did it, you, you tick it. You click and it becomes a tick. If not, you leave it as is. Basically, it's like a cross, which means it hasn't been done. But you will see your progress. Every week, every month, month to month, you see your progress. You monitor your progress. And if a person is really sincere of wanting to reform their lives, to transform their lives, Naik A'mal is one of the best tools available in the market. Provided to you for free from your Dawati Islami. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When going to sleep, make an intention 
of trying to awaken for Tahajjud Salah. Tahajjud Salah has great blessings. In fact, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best Salah after the Fard Salah is Salah performed at night, the night Salah. So make an intention to get up for Tahajjud and then stay awake, recite some Quran, some Adhkar, some Durood Pak, and then you'll, you'll enter into Fajr time. Hmm? So Tahajjud time, Isha time, Suhoor or Sahri time ends, Fajr begins. Right? Something to take note of, that when we are, when we are sleeping, we must not sleep on our stomach, on our belly. It's, it's a very bad thing because the people of Jahannam, this is one of their doings. That this is the way of the people of Jahannam to sleep on the belly, on the stomach. When a person is going to sleep, then recite Bismillah Rahman Rahim or Bismillah in the name of Allah. And dust the bedding. This is a practice taught to us by our beautiful deen. If there's dust, maybe insects, inshallah, those will be removed. Begin by sleeping on your right side. On your right side, with your right palm, under your right cheek, facing towards the qibla. For as long as you can, try to sleep in this position, which is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa A fascinating fact that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa two eyes, physical eyes, used to sleep, used to close. But the two eyes of his heart used to be awake and open all the time. Kya baat hai Madhi Mufi? That's our beloved master. He is, he is unique. He is exclusive. He is the beloved of Allah azza wa jal. Sayyidul Ma'asumeen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, before going to bed, Amir Ahl Sunnah Tamil Barakatuhumul Aliyah advises us that make a fresh wudu. Relieve yourself, make a fresh wudu. It is very good to sleep in the, a state of wudu. So make a fresh wudu and perform two rakat of Salatul salatu Tawbah. Tawbah we know is repentance. You can recite any surah uh, in each rakat, surah to tawbah, and when you finish, now ask Allah for forgiveness. Recall, recollect what wrong I did today. Did I hurt anybody's feelings? Did I violate any, any person's rights? Did I usurp anybody's wealth or property or items? Think about all the negativities. Did I use obscene language and vulgarism? Did I do something wrong today? Did I miss my salah? So you're questioning yourself. This is apart from nek a'mal. In fact, this will be an ideal time to fill out the nek a'mal because it helps you to recollect your day. And then you make, raise your hands and beg Allah for forgiveness of each one. Mention them. Ya Allah, today, I disrespected my parents. Ya Allah, forgive me, ya Allah. Today, I was dishonest in a business deal. Today, I lied. Ya Allah, forgive me. And remember, there are conditions for tawbah. And one is, one must have sincere regret and remorse for having done the wrong, the sin. One must make a firm intention of not going back to do that sin. We should cry in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. And then you go to sleep. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. You know some children, some kids, they, they like their bedtime stories. I'm going to get to the wazifas in, in a few moments inshallah. So, sometimes we tell them fairy tales. You know, stories that uh, that are not real, they are fairy tales. But we will urge you 
to download the book called Quranic Wonders, Ajaib al Quran. Quranic Wonders, it is a fantastic book. I'm, I tell you, it's a fantastic book. Read it for yourself. This is full of stories from the Quran and fascinating stories. I'll just give you one example where, for example, in Surah Al Baqarah, uh, verse 57, he talks about manna and salwa. That this was, these, these were food items that were sent by Allah Azza wa Jal from the sky. It used to descend from the sky to the Bani Israel who were staying in that forest or jungle area. Subhanallah. And they were told that don't store, don't hide away and store this food. Every day you're going to get it. But they did not listen. And they started to store and hide that maybe tomorrow you won't get it. And from then onwards, food started to go off. Food started to go rotten from then onwards. Allah. And I'm telling you, download this book. You go to dawnsami.net and it's a free download. In fact, in English alone, you can find over 200 books and booklets in English on diverse topics. All downloadable for free. Subhanallah. And your Dawud Islami is translating the books and booklets of Dawud Islami in over 30 different languages. Subhanallah, subhanallah. How, how wonderful is that for the convenience and the benefit of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you'll find many stories, Quranic stories, real stories, true stories about the Anbiya alayhi salam, about the pious people, about different nations, but of course with moral lessons, lessons and practical advices as well. And tell this to your kids. Myself, I do it. And they are fascinated by it. So you get the attention because you're talking about wonderful things. The Asa of Musa alayhi salam, the stick of Musa alayhi salam. When he used to throw it, it used to become a giant snake. So, you know, it seems, it is fascinating, but it's true. It's in, the Quran mentions these stories. And what are you doing at the same time? You are teaching them authentic Islamic knowledge, authentic Islamic information. You are teaching them in the process. So, let's switch from the fake fairy tales to stories of the Quran, stories of the Anbiya alayhi salam, the Sahaba ikram, the Ahlul Bayt, the Awliya Allah, Subhanallah. Now, when you are sleeping, when you're on your bed, then recite the dua before sleeping, which is Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Now, listen to the translation for those who don't know. O oh Allah, Azza wa Jal, I die and I live with your name. Meaning, I sleep and I awaken with your name. You know, you mentioned sleep is the brother of death. It's a proverb. So, I die, Allahumma bismika, Allah in your name, with your name. Amutu, I die. I'm sleeping. It is as if I'm dead. Wa ahya. And I live if I awaken by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Also recite Ayatul Kursi. If a person doesn't know it, enroll in Madrasatul Madina, Balighan for males and Balighat for females separately, where these things are taught. The Jweed and Makharij of the Quran are taught. And by reciting Ayatul Kursi, one will receive protection from Allah Azza wa Jal against the fitna, against the mischief and evil. Of humans and jinns. Subhanallah. When you're going to sleep, when you're closing your windows and your doors, recite Bismillah and close the window, recite Bismillah and close the door. By doing this, you will block off entry of any jinn into your house, into your home. They will not be able to enter. If you take the name of Allah, 
Bismillah, and you close your windows and your doors as well. Recite Tasbih Fatima. Subhanallah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar, 34 times. Recite this as well. Now, if you feel some people have this, this problem, it could be a jinn problem, it could be sihr, jadu, black magic, it could be some a psychological problem where they feel something or someone is pressing their body when they, when they are going to sleep. There's a pressure on them. There's, there's a heavy weight on them. Or a person may have a suffer from nightmares, is unable to sleep, is suffering from insomnia. Then recite the following before sleeping as well. Okay, for this one has to spread the palms out. Recite the three quls. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. The entire surahs, three. And blow on the palms. Then wipe yourself, your, your face, your head, wherever your, your hands can reach. Wipe yourself. And do this for a second time and a third time as well. Inshallah, this will give you a lot of benefit. And one will be protected against jinn or sihr, magic, jadu, black magic, or different kinds of disasters. Now you can find this wazifa also in the very lovely booklet called Ailing Worshipper on pages 31 to 32. Ailing Worshipper 31 to 32. And you can download this for free as well from daudislami.net. If you need a hard copy, contact your local Madini Markaz, your local Dawud Islami Islamic Center, and make inquiries from Maktabutul Madina. This is the bookshop and publications department of Dawud Islami, where these hard copies are available, inshallah. Azzawajal. It's a beautiful wazifa, very simple, very easy. And it has a very beautiful benefit. The person who recites the following, Ya Karimu, Ya Karimu, Ya Karimu, whilst on your bed. If you recite this, Ya Karimu, whilst on your bed, then inshallah ta'ala, angels will make dua for you. Subhanallah. The pure angels of Allah Azza wa Jal will make dua for you. Let's make an intention to practice upon this. It's simple. It's easy. We can do it. So try to practice. Ya Karimu when you're on your bed. Okay. Just a few tips for, for those people who are suffering from insomnia. And then we'll get back to the other wadha'if. For people who suffer from nightmares and... Uh, uh, inability of sleeping properly, etc. Right? So we are told by psychologists, by experts, one should keep a, a a routine when it comes to sleeping. A regular routine, meaning like sleeping at a certain time every day and awakening at a certain time every day. So your sleep hours, your sleep pattern, there must be a routine for this. For Sometimes a person, maybe on social media, watching clips or doing research or whatever it is, and before you know it, you look at the time and it's 12 o'clock. It's, it's 1 a.m., 2 a.m. It's, then it's hard to get up for tahajjud. It's hard to get up for fajr. So keep a routine. By this time, every day, I need to sleep. I need to go in the bed, close my eyes, read my wadaif, my invocations, my duas, surahs. I need to sleep. Train your mind, train yourself to sleep at a certain time every day and to awaken at a certain time as well. Create a restful sleeping environment. If your room is too hot or too cold, this affects the sleep as well. If there's too much of light coming into your room, it will affect your sleep. So try to block out light or 
noises by if you need to and this is especially for those suffering from insomnia very difficult time to sleep they can't sleep they try to and it affects them mentally okay if you need to use earplugs if there's too much of noise on the outside some people live in flats and maybe the neighbors because there's just a wall separating them from the neighbors and those people maybe they are rowdy maybe they are noisy or whatever and it affects you it affects your the harmony of your home or it may affect your sleep if you need to use earplugs use the earplugs or an eye mask if you can't block out the the light nowadays you, you have this black out or block out curtains which are dark and thick which keeps out the the light uh, especially the artificial light from from the the lamps or the lights that are there on the outside obviously set your alarm if you need to set two alarms set three alarms to remind you to get up for tahajjud and especially for fajr salah make sure your bed is comfortable and your room is cool if a person's bed is half broken and you know uncomfortable it will affect their sleep as well it will not just their sleep it will affect their body they, they'll have back pains and this pain and that pain because the bed itself is not comfortable right exercise is excellent regularly regular exercise is excellent but not at the time when you're going to sleep because when you start exercising at that time remember you're getting all heated up all sweaty you're perspiring the the hormones are pumping in the body and now you want to go and sleep so it creates some difficulty for one so at the time of sleeping that's not the time to exercise and what your diet as well don't binge on these late night snacks that also affects one's sleep exercising at night a uh, late dinner or supper late night snacks having something that has a lot of caffeine like these energy drinks which are overloaded with sugar with caffeine or maybe drinking too strong or too much of coffee a lot of coffee this actually affects a, per- a person's sleep <clears throat> all right the experts they also say that smoking negatively affects the sleep of a person this is just another reason to quit it if one is smoking now try to relax try to relax your your muscles your body your mind before you sleep relax your relaxing your entire body because stress stress can really really create problems for one it can create so many difficulties it can create physical pains stress mental problems too much of worrying anxiety it has an adverse a negative effect on the body and the mind so try to calm yourself down and remember this is especially for those who are suffering from insomnia right some researchers some researchers they say that if something is on your mind bothering you write it down at least 15 minutes before you sleep you know maybe you thinking tomorrow i have to do this i have to pay this bill i have to visit this person that meeting whatever write it down so it doesn't crowd your mind and you you'll be at more at ease it's something psychological because you know it's there okay i i'm taking that out i'm putting it down and i'll i'll continue from here tomorrow it's there i can't forget i'll remember it because it's in front of me um, it's it's there on the side so you wrote it down it doesn't crowd the mind So it has a positive psychological effect. If you really cannot sleep, make sure that your room is cool, and go and have a hot shower. 
By doing this, by stepping out from hot water or warm water into a pre-cooled room, it causes the body temperature to drop a little. And this triggers sleepy feelings by slowing down the metabolic activity. In extreme cases, like delayed sleep phase disorder, DSPD, also called delayed sleep phase syndrome, this is a chronic disorder and it affects the timing of your sleep. In such cases, you would want to consult a doctor, maybe even think of therapy. Keep your phone or devices away from you. You know, the blue screen, the blue light on the screen is not good for one. It actually increases alertness and it delays the release of the sleep-inducing hormone called melatonin. So be careful. You know, some, some phones, uh, smartphones have an option there uh, where you can sort of dim the, the blue light. But this is very, very negative for one who has sleep problems. And for kids, make sure even if it's half an hour before, one hour before, they must not be on those phones. It's, it's not good. It's not healthy for them. All right. Now, some wazifas, very easy, very simple. Make a note of this. If there's somebody who cannot sleep, maybe suffering from insomnia, whatever reason. Another person must recite the following abundantly close to that person until they fall off to sleep. La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Easy. Recite this continuously, but it must be audible, but not so loud that it will affect the sleep of that patient. Right? And similarly, recite La ilaha illallah 11 times. If you have a problem with sleeping or you know somebody, then advise them. Recite 11 times La ilaha illallah and do dumb on yourself. <sighs> Blow on yourself. Through the park, once before and after, any wazifa that you are reciting, ensure that you have that you recite at least one durud sharif before and after as well. So eleven times, la ilaha illallah, with durud park before and after, and then do dham on yourself. Inshallah, azza wa jal, you will see the benefit of that. For that person who is suffering from nightmares. Nightmares, bad dreams, is from shaitan, the cursed one, the humiliated one, the disgraced one. If you have a nightmare and you, and you get up, usually you're all perspiring. Then what you do is turn to your left side and spit three times. But without any saliva, just the sound. Because if somebody's sleeping there, it's going to go on them. Just the sound. Three times, recite the Hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim and then change the side you were sleeping on. Change the side. Again, recite your dua before sleeping, ayatul kursi. You know, Allah Hazrat, our leader, our master, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi the great mujaddid of Islam, the great reviver of Islam. Subhanallah. He was asked that what can we do or recite for the protection of Iman at the time of death? And one of the things he said was, when you go to sleep, the absolute last thing that you must do is recite Surah Al-Kafirun. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ The whole surah one time. And then you must sleep. If you need to engage in any conversation, 
then again recite it and sleep away. Inshallah Ta'ala, the person who is habitual with this will die with Iman. Subhanallah. So let's make an intention to practice on that as well. And Iman, our belief, our faith, that's the most valuable asset of a believer. The most prized possession of a believer is Iman. Because if we live with Iman, Madina, Madina. Allah protect our Iman. And the Iman of our children, grandchildren, and future generations as well. But we have to be concerned of the safety of our Iman. Very important. Five times Salah, being obedient to Allah and His Rasul, Azza wa Jalla wa Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam. These things will help us to strengthen the Iman so that the thief of Iman, Shaitan, Iblis, the cursed one, the humiliated one, he becomes humiliated more. And we don't give him a chance to influence us with his wasawis, with his evil whispers. Because ultimately, Satan, Shaitan, wants to steal this Iman. Allah protect our Iman. Amin bijahin Nabi al Amin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nevertheless, one who suffers from nightmares should recite the following 21 times. When you go to sleep, 21 times, the Park once before and after. Ya mutakabbiru. Ya mutakabbiru. Ya mutakabbiru. 21 times at the time of sleeping. The Park once before and after. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, you will be cured from this problem of nightmares. And you continue reciting this until you receive that cure. Inshallah Ta'ala. Another very important aspect is oversleeping. For those who sleep too much, on one side we have people who can't sleep, who try to sleep who are suffering from insomnia. And on the other side, you may get somebody who is oversleeping, who sleeps too much. I want you to consider this. Think about this for a moment and contemplate over what the consequences are. That if a person sleeps for eight hours a day, of course, each person will have their own routine. Maybe for some, Four hours is enough. They are fresh for the rest, for the other 20, 20 hours. For some, six hours. For some, eight hours. Some, maybe more, maybe less. But just think about this. Something to really ponder over. If a person sleeps for eight hours a day, that's one third of your day sleeping. And if you were to live to 60 years old, you would be sleeping for 20 years of your life. 20 years of your life, you had slept. Literally, you were sleeping for 20 years. Allahu Akbar. Something to think about. But we need to train ourselves, our body, our minds, that, you know, how much of sleep do I really need? Maybe six hours, maybe five hours, maybe I can give two hours a day in Madani Kam, in Dini Kam, Madani activities. Subhanallah. Make those intentions, inshallah. When a person awakens, they should recite the dua for waking up, which is Alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhin nushur. And again, I want you to think about the meaning, the translation of this, that all praises are due to Allah Azza wa Jal, who gave us life after death, and to Him we shall return. Life after death. Life means we are awakening. After death, we were sleeping like we were dead. Subhanallah, Allah gave us life. Thank Allah, we have many blessings these eyes, ears, nose, mouth, we are able to use our limbs, our hands, our feet. We are able to use our, our minds to think, our tongues, our mouths to talk. 
these are great blessings of Allah. When last did I thank Allah Azza wa Jal? I thank you, Ya Allah. You gave me so many blessings. Continue to thank Allah. La in shakartum la azidannakum. If we give thanks, Allah will increase us in blessings. Inshallah ta'ala. When you awaken, use a maswak and start making good intentions. Amir Ahl Sunnah Dawud Barakatumul Aliyah advises us that as soon as you get up, you read your dua for awakening, start making good intentions. Today, Ya Allah, I will not sin, I will not abuse my sight, my ears, I will not do anything to disobey you, I will try my best to follow the sunnah, to be obedient to you, Ya Allah, and uh, Azza wa Jalla and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So your thawab meter, your reward meter, starts from the time you awaken. Please don't forget to tune into other programs and silsilas of Madani channel. This silsila has come to an end, but your Madani channel is going to continue. And in particular, every Saturday night, don't forget to join to watch Madani Mudhakara. We have Amir Ahl Sunnah, Damud Barakatum al is seen live answering different questions on different topics as well. Until next time, keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You slaves always request for dua. You slaves always request for dua. Please fulfill the wish of Every helpless, Ya Allah, please fulfill the wish of every helpless, Ya Allah.